is this uh, how new is this movement? Is it an African American movement, or was it uh, before uh, America? Um, Hebrew Israelites have a revised history, so they'll try to go way back and all this kind of thing. The the reality of it, though, is that Hebrew Israelism is about 130 years old. Began in America, uh, 1880s, late 1880s at the earliest, and more likely sometime in the 1890s. There's different dates with different guys. There's hmm. a little bit of confusion there. Building built by slaves. The gentleman that laid the first brick laid the last. The balcony hold pews that actually were built by slaves. They have the oldest information in this building. That information is written in cursive Hebrew writing. And that information is written in cursive Hebrew writing. And that information is written in cursive Hebrew writing. To say the first uh, black church in America, this is the way they phrase it. I'm not saying it's accurate because it's not the first, but it's the longest standing. Anyways, they say the first black church in America had Hebrew writing on the pews, and that's proof that our people were originally the Israelites. Have you ever heard this? The only way that they can say that, that is by essentially being ignorant of history. Explain, um, explain why that's not a good but, argument for them, as far well, as because, the, the Hebrew pew, pew writing. I've seen the pictures. Right, well, it's, it's ultimately ahistorical, uh, and they might have a meme, um, but, uh, you know, as we know, you know, they have tons of memes that are, um, that, that are essentially false and convey false history. And that's what they do. Like, I feel like in Christianity, when I first kind of started being, becoming a part of it, it was always the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, focus on the gospel, stay in those books. Accepting the gospel would help the Negroes be better slaves and their slave masters would get a big reward in heaven. But ordinary church wouldn't work. The slaves didn't attend often enough, and when they did, the sermons were not dumbed down enough for a Negro to understand. Set up religious education stations on the boundaries between the plantations, and to send specially trained teachers onto the plantations to teach the Negroes religion at a level they could comprehend. So, a plan was devised to set up religious education stations on the boundaries between the plantations, and to send specially trained teachers onto the plantations to teach the Negroes religion at a level they could comprehend. To keep the Negroes illiterate and never teach them anything other than the gospel according to those who were enslaving them. The same people that took the original scriptures from the continent of Africa into England, translated it, and then reimagined it into this religion. Now they're going to use this religion to somehow facilitate the salvation of the slaves. The song Kumbaya. We were told it's this this camp song, Kumbaya. That last word there is ya, Y-A-H. It's a Negro spiritual. It was sang in the Gullah Geechee language. Uh, I'm going to pull up a Wikipedia article for you, but Gullah Geechee is an official recognized language. So this song, Kumbaya, is, it has the word ya in it. We're told it means come by here, God, or come by here, Lord. So if the word is kumbaya, which is really a sentence or a phrase, what word in there would represent God or Lord? It would be Yah, the God of Israel, the God of the Hebrews. So why were people taken from West Africa singing this? We know because we read in Cambridge that they were already practicing Judaism over there and they had a Torah before the, uh, before the Europeans came and snatched them off of their uh, continent, minding their business. The Gullah language is sometimes linked to Bohemian Creole, Barbadian Creole, Guyanese Creole, Belizean Creole, Jamaican Patois, and the Creole language of West Africa. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, 
Recha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you other brethren, you followers of the truth, even you few sisters. And uh, let me say shalom to the elect. Okay, so anyway, I want to go in this video here by uh, response to the Dallas Theological Seminary. Um, who had Vocab Malone on as a guest. So I'll try to whip through this a little quick, but just pull up some, you know, a little bit of history and a little bit of um, proof of who we are. See, a lot of people think, and this is what they left out in the school systems, right, that who we were when we came over into slavery. They, they just said we were slaves, we was captured in Africa, and that's it. Nobody went into the languages. Nobody went into what we followed, our tradition, uh, you know, our uh, tradition, traditional beliefs or anything. We didn't know. So why are they hiding? What were we before we were uh, so-called slaves, born on those slave ships? And what language, languages were we speaking, right? So then you have, there's a book here called The Religious Institution of the Negroes. Right, so Vocab Malone um, did a counter video to the writing uh, on the pews in the uh, churches in uh, the 1700s, right? When he said it was the 1800s that these men went out and told us that we was he Hebrews, okay? So what you had happening is what they were doing it was obvious that some of us knew what we were but they whipped it out of most of us so you would have still had people telling us who we were and this is what they were against okay so obviously he said that the writing on the pews wasn't uh hebrew what must be understood is we were pretty much in the different languages just like today, even going back in uh, Greece, Rome. You know, our people was following the Greek customs, you know. So that we had different languages. And then amongst me meeting other nations, you know, just like in slavery, we adopted the English language. So at that time, we knew many languages, but there was all a pretty much dialect of uh, Hebrew. But before I further you know go further into this i got to get a scripture john 8 and 32 38 and 32 and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free this is how we're becoming free and there's nothing now that vocab malone or any other the christians that's why they sit up there their their whole counsel is to try to get us to forget and go back into the christianity um the christian churches now again when we look at this um it was a book, again, by Charles, um, I don't know his name, Charles something. And it's called Charles Jones, The Religious Instruction of the Negro Negroes in the United States. So why did the Negroes need a religious instruction? Why did the Native Americans need a religious instruction? Because along with slavery came religion. And the false Christianity is what came. You got to remember, there was history of them uh, doing a reformation, reformationists even in the 1500s. By the time we got into slavery, you know, they was forcing and beating us into Christianity. You know, John Calvin was one of those guys. Um, the Puritans, John Calvin, they were one of the, he was one of those guys, and many others who forced a hand in, in burning people at the stake that's where they get the lynching and the burning from this is also why they lynched and burnt us uh in 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 slavery right this is also why they put up crosses in our yards why because we were the true jews the so-called negroes let me say that were the true jews in america there's no secret that yahweh was hung on a similar device because that's technically that's a different video but it's no secret that we were hung as well. Anyway, I'm going to read something out of here, 
real quick uh, if I can find it there's so much in there it says it says because of their entire dependence upon whites for their every improvement they have almost no spirit or moral improvement among themselves this is what happens when you take someone who believes in something else and force them to believe in what you believe I wouldn't have any spirit to believe in Christianity either if you was forcing that on me. If somebody dragged us out of our home right now and said, worship uh, a big rock that fell out of the sky, right? And that's not what I believed, you know? Or some big white man with blonde hair, you must bow down to him. You ain't gonna have no interest in nothing like that, man. Uh, it is. It is not to be expected from them to consider their character and circumstance. See, that's what they're saying. That they have no men of influence, no leaders or their, of their own color who are able to sway the people to project and execute plans for their general religious improvements. Right? I'm not going to read the whole thing. Here's another section. The Negroes have a gospel already. It says they have access to the churches on the Sabbath and hear the same preaching that matters that masters do. They are favored frequently with services from the ministers expresses expressly for their instruction. And this is why they set up those preachers, right? It all makes sense when we bring it together. We did they didn't we didn't have any way of being guided into Christianity. We wasn't really feeling the masters so what they did is they set up you know taskmasters so to speak other so-called black people and taught them in their so-called seminaries because the seminary is nothing new and then they branched them out and told them to teach the christian way and then they paid them good money to do it so you had sellouts back then who sold out to sell out everyone else it says they are received into and are under the watch of discipline of the white churches there are some sabbath schools for them they have plantation prayers right and numerous preachers and exhorters of their own color that's what we you know that's what i was just going into and some of them are able to read nor do they know it says some of them are able to read nor do they know any other religion but the christian religion Right, because as time went on, that's what we were taught. So, here's an article here from Nigeria um, called the Igbos, Jews Lost Tribe of Israel. See, why is this made great media hype? This is actually CNN. Igbos, well, where do you think we came from? So, this would prove that the, the Negroes here in America and the so-called Negroes and uh, over in West Africa who are mixed among the other tribes because it ain't just the tribe of Judah. The Israelites are here and in West Africa well, mainly and, and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. It all makes sense. So then you go to, you can just Google any of this and um, you can ask what tribes I mean, what languages were the people speaking, right? It says, what languages were the people speaking? Um, I, I can't remember what it said, but one was Yaruba, right? One was um, Igbo, which is a dialect of Bantu, um, Swahili, and various other languages, right? But we all equated it, it was all equated with the Hebrew, right? Let's read this little article. Uh, Bantu is Hebrew. The Bantu languages are dialects, and this was what Radoshi, which you saw in the video, the uh, slave woman, she was speaking Bantu, which is a dialect of different broken down forms of Hebrew, right? The Bantu languages are dialects of ancient Hebrew. The root language of the Bantu dialect is the Igbo, right, which is Hebrews, languages of Nigeria, which 
at least affected by foreign influence among the Bantu dialects. So we can't deny this. Vocab Malone said it started 130 years ago. Okay? 130 years going back into the 1880s, 1890s. The church was built in the 1700s. There was written of a form of Hebrew, Bantu, Hebrew, and this is why it wouldn't look like the Hebrew, even the Hebrew that they use today is washed down, right? What they speak, uh, um, which I'm not going to say, there's certain things you can't say or they will pull a video, the Yids, Yiddish, is a form of a dialect of French, uh, um, Poland, um, and various other languages, Russian, various other languages, right? So when you see that dialect and people like vocab will say, well, that's real Hebrew. But then when you see Bantu or, you know, the Bantu dialect, all of a sudden that's not Hebrew, right? All of a sudden that's not Hebrew. Does that make any sense? So this predates 130 years ago, which they claim. Even in that time to do something like that, of course, of what was happening that would have been catastrophic, right? It was the thing of taking us from it. That was the key. They didn't want us to believe in it. Anyway, the Igbo dialect being the source of the Bantu dialects is why ancient Hebrew root, root words are predominantly seen in the Igbo dialect as opposed to other Bantu dialects. It says, which have been more affected from migration and colonization. The Hebrew language has been affected by captivity, migration from since the days of the judges where you find different tribal uh, accents. So when you go even back, we was even in the, the, the Maccabees, even going back, we always under captivity, you know, you would get into different dialects of different languages. Right. You know, we we spoke Greek, you know, Hebrew, Greek. And, you know, Jake make a dialect like when you look at the Native Americans uh, who speak a form of Espanol. Right. Which is kind of a little bit different from the dialect that they speak in Spain. Uh, the same thing we speak in English, our, how, how our dialect is as Israelites here in English is different than actual over in England. And we got brothers there as well. So, you know, the dialects do change, but it still points back to the Hebrew. So that's why this language we have has is an affiliation even with the Hebrew. So those people, and uh, the whole point I'm making it is we predate the 130 years. It predates it. And this Jake that's sitting up there with Vocab Malone, he ought to really be ashamed of himself, man. He ashamed of himself. But that's who he is. There's a thing of reincarnation. He's back. He's one of those guys. He might have... A lot of these black preachers, a lot of these reformationists that are reincarnated, that are back here, Vocab may have had them as underlings in the ancient times, right? Or them years, many years back, Right? to help push the gospel even in the sign of slavery they set guys like that up so when you see these guys like g-man and uh jay the producer and this guy isaiah they're all back doing the same thing that they did before and it, it all makes sense let me go to the scripture psalms and you could google this you can look it up there's all kind of books literature psalms 83 and 4 they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more remembrance. And this is clear on how they um, made sure that they took our religion, our belief, let me say that, our faith, and the Lord allowed them to do that. And this is how we became broken and followed Christianity. So the question would be, what were we before we were so-called Christians in America? And you do this through generation to generation and put Christmas and holidays and Ishtar or Easter on top of these things and this is what you get a broken destroyed people discontinuing from their heritage and he said that's talking about land also is another thing he said in there real quick 
that he said um, it wasn't about the uh, the heritage. Jeremiah seventeen and four had nothing to do with uh, the heritage, uh, our you know ancestry or in our heritage, but so much about just the lands. He told this theologian that all you got to do is look at the books and put it with timelines. And that's how you con confound the Israelites. So when you read Isaiah 19, he's thinking it's actually talking about actual Egypt. You know, when you read Jeremiah 51, you know, a lot of Jake, like well, a lot of people like him in, in these uh, Christian Jakes, they're actually thinking it's a lot of times it's talking about strictly Babylon, right? But like today has no merit. It is not talking about today. These are prophecies that has everything to do with future. America wasn't named America, right? So anyway, I just thought it was interesting. That's all I have on that, Shalom.